Oh, it's his last one. Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! Keep the pressure on. For three months, there has been no greater pressure on the life of John Elway. It appears to finally be over. There will not be a 17th season for John Elway in Denver, but as we reflect on 16 years in Bronco Orange, remember, it could have been 16 in horseshoes or even in pinstripes. In June of 1981, Elway, a sophomore out of Stanford, was the first selection of the New York Yankees summer draft. He played class A ball in Oneonta, New York. Then the 1983 NFL draft approached. It appeared Elway would be taken by the Baltimore Colts, a team he had no intention of playing for. If I was to play in Baltimore, it would be more advantageous for me to play baseball. And, and with that respect, that's why I would play baseball if, if I, instead of playing in Baltimore. The Colts did draft Elway anyway, but understood his ultimatum and traded him to Denver. Well, it was a decision that I had to, had to make. It was not popular at the time, but uh, made the decision because I thought it was best for me. And it ended up that uh, it worked out for everybody, and I ended up here in Denver. That trade was the beginning of one of the greatest careers in NFL history. His cannon arm led the Broncos to 148 victories, more than any other quarterback in NFL history. His 47 comeback drives are only part of his numerous defining qualities. The first game that pops back in my head is, is the Cleveland game because that's really what put me on the map, kind of got me over the hump and, and kind of, you know, got me to the point where people said, you know what, the, the guy's a pretty good football player. The snap to Elway, the look, the throw, touchdown! 98 and a half yard drive. To all of those who heard John Elway speak, it was immediately apparent. Playing football was never about accomplishments and accolades. It was always about winning, winning a Super Bowl. I want to be able to say well, someday back in, when I get old and, and decrepit, I want to be able to say at I one point chance, I was, a, I was a world champ. Unfortunately for Elway, as well as the rest of the 1983 draftees, which included such prolific passers as Dan Marino and Jim Kelly, the six-man class was a collective 0 and 9 in Super Bowl appearances until January 25th, 1998, the day the stigma was lifted, as well as the shadow of the AFC's 13-year Super Bowl drought and the Broncos' 0-4 record in the ultimate game. Oh, baby, they're gonna win this thing! Are you kidding me? You can stand up and salute in Denver. The Broncos are world champions. Final score, Denver 31, Green Bay 24. It was a huge monkey off my back once you win a Super Bowl, because no matter how many times uh, you get there, and for eight years, since 89, since the last Super Bowl we'd been at, that's all we talked about. I mean, the amount of pressure that it took off me uh, was unbelievable, more than I ever even imagined. After attaining his world championship quest, many thought he would finally say so long to football, enjoy his family, wife Janet, and four kids. But when the family vote came down, it was five to one. The only one voting for retirement was John. I personally just felt like, why? You're, you're at the top of your game. If you still love the game, why do you need to quit? Um, sure, it's a fairy tale, happy ending to it all, but who says that can't happen again? Red twist! Elway now is going to leave the game. His helmet is off, both arms extended in the air. And if it's not his last game, it sure seems like it. Elway's abilities on the playing field are evident in his numbers, yet his strength as a motivator and a leader can only be measured by those he has played with. When he came to play the game, he always, he always came to play. I mean, John could have hung his cleats up last year, and uh, he's a person who would, who would never let the game get the best of him. For some reason, he go out there, and if he's beat up, he's going to go out there and play. Uh, you know, he's going to give it his all. Uh, he's a person that's he's an unselfish quarterback. He doesn't point fingers at, at receivers, running backs. Uh, he takes the blame on himself. But, I mean, John is, John is bigger than life here. Just how much bigger became apparent last November when he was an integral part of getting a new stadium proposal passed. A proposal that had John Elway not supported and the Broncos not had their recent success, Denver and the Broncos may no longer be synonymous. I know all he's been through, what he's done, uh, what he's meant to this organization. Uh, what he's meant to this team in general, how he's handled himself, and you know, such a special guy for him, and to handle it the way he does. You know, he, you know, he's a team guy. He doesn't want the attention going to him. He wants to find a way to win this football game, and that's secondary, which, 
you know, just tells you a lot about John Elway. When all is said and done, number seven will have gone out exactly the way he wanted to. A two-time Super Bowl champion who played professional football the way it was supposed to be played. And that is just a part of how John Elway would like to be remembered. He played hard and uh, was a competitor and never quit. And uh, when you played John Elway, uh, he didn't always play great, but you always got everything he had in the end. Uh, Tried to win every football game that I was in. And, and the most important thing to John Elway was uh, uh, winning. And uh, stats and all that other stuff was secondary. It was all about winning. That was Carl Ravage. Thank you very much. And when we talk about stats, you talk about Elway's 47 career fourth quarter comebacks. First on the all-time list, Dan Marino, who's matched Elway's season for season. Second on that list with 34. Joe Montana had 31 in his 15 seasons in the NFL. And we'll have much more on the brilliant career of John Elway on the Sunday morning edition of SportsCenter. His records, his comebacks, and the link of number 7, 23, and 99. Still to come on this program.